your weather guy here with a quick look at the upcoming winter and starting to see some really interesting things coming together. Uh, what we're going to focus on today is sea surface temperatures um, and namely La Nina. The La Nina that's starting to come on here as you can see current uh, sea surface temperature anomalies. We can see the La Nina starting to come on um, on the west coast of South America along that equator there. So typically what we'll see in a La Nina winter is the cold air focused on the northern part of the United States. Um, the rest of the United States, especially in the south, you're, you're going to see warmer than average temperatures. Um, and kind of in between there, you're going to see average temperatures with kind of a battle between cold and warm. Uh, but not every La Nina winter is the same. So for instance, 95, 96 is considered like the benchmark of all winter, especially in the eastern United States, where it was just brutally cold, um, basically from November all the way through March with, with a ton of snow. Um, so if we look at the sea surface temperatures, um, and this is actually interesting too. This is, so this is last year's sea surface temperatures. You can see how warm it is, especially uh, re I mean, really globally, you had a ton of a very warm sea surface temperatures and we had a re really strong El Nino as well. This is gonna be completely different from last winter, so forget about last winter. This winter is gonna be very, very different. Um, but if we go and take a look at what happened in 95, 96, we can start to see some similarities. So this is the same time, this is, this is uh, mid-August, going to late August, 95, when we started to see that La Nina coming on right around that same time. Um, and if we kind of juxtapose that to what we're seeing today, you can see those similarities. Now there are some differences as well, um, you know, especially in the Northern Pacific where we have a lot warmer, we have more warmer temperatures than we did in 95, 96. Um, so we'll have to see how that kind of, um, how that develops as we go into the fall. Things can, can change kind of quickly. Um, but we're starting to see some similarities there. So 95, 96, uh, you know, weak to moderate La Nina, which is I think what we're gonna see this year, weak to moderate La Nina. And when we have one of those, that colder air that's typically confined to the northern part of the United States is allowed to, to move more towards the, the East Coast um, and a large portion of the Eastern United States. Uh, so remember that winter that was, was really cold, basically across the entire lower 48. Another winter I wanted to pull up, which I thought was interesting, is 1718, 2017, 2018. Take a look at this right here. And I think this is very similar to what we're seeing right now um, in the Pacific. We have the La Nina coming on right around that same time. I think in 2017, 2018, we saw that La Nina really start to come on um, in, in the fall, September, October, November. And I think that's what we're going to see this year as well. Um, and Northern Pacific matches up very closely to what we're seeing right now. Pop over here. You can see that Northern Pacific and the La Nina region, the Enzo region, looks very similar to what we're seeing right now. The winter of 2017, 2018 was colder than normal across basically um, east of the Rockies. You saw colder, you saw a colder than normal winter. Um, the last week of February, it, things started to change. The last week of February was very warm, uh, but from December 1st to about February to um, February 17th or so, it was much colder than normal east of the Rockies, outside of like South Florida. So I think you know, so if we're just focusing on sea surface temperatures, it's matching up pretty closely to 17, 18. Um, and one thing interesting about 1718 was, you know, we had that wheat, that really warm stretch at the end of February, <clears throat> and then winter came back with with vengeance, with a vengeance in March, and we had a couple really big snowstorms in the, the northeastern part of the United States uh, in March. So it'll be interesting to see. We're going to monitor this as we go forward, but right now, um, current Enzo forecasts, as you can see, a greater than 50% chance of a La Nina coming on um, and really lasting through the entire winter, just like 17, 18, um, not too dissimilar from 95, 96 as well. And if we take a look at some of the forecasts 
for the strength of the La Nina, you can see it's staying in that, that weak to, to moderate phase, uh, which is really what you want to see. If you're eastern part of the United States, east of the Rockies, you want to see it in that weak to moderate. If you're, I should say, if you're a, a cold weather and, and snow, snow lover, um, that's what you want to see. And in that situation, the West Coast, so in 1718, the West Coast was very warm, very warm. Um, so we'll continue to, to monitor. As we go forward, we're going to talk about some other things as well. That the North Atlantic Oscillation plays a big part in this. 95, 96 had a very strong negative NAO. And when you combine that with a weak to moderate La Nina, it can lead to a pretty, pretty cold, snowy winter. So we'll start to take a look at that as we go forward um, in the fall.